And I need a fireplace without. I'm setting up this laptop takes all day, but I'm going to have to look at that frame rate. <laughs> it probably won't take all day, but yeah. OK, so we have our fireplace. We turned it on. We have some heat going into the room. We're getting the room warmer, so the room is going from cold to warm. And then some of the heat gets lost through windows, doors, cracks, whatever. You want to sit in a closed room like that. So let's look at parts of that system. This is not a math problem. This is just theory. So the actual system is the air in the room. You would think the system is the fireplace, but in this case, the fireplace is being used to act on the room. So the room is the, the air is the system. We're going to change the temperature of the air, move it around. The boundaries, which we don't always talk about, is, how do I say it nice? The surface that supports the air in the room from everything else. So let me put it. Surface supporting the air in the room from everything. The fireplace. is outside the boundary. So we're not talking about its physical location. We're just talking about that there's airflow and the air is cold and then hot and then the air leaves. So that's our system, that's our boundary. Uh, the sweet sound of a new PC. <laughs> I don't think the thumbprint works, but it is cool. It's got like a thumb protector, you know, like like Face ID. Yeah. <laughs> My son sets those up for his his job. He's over at the Pentagon, and uh, he they have to change every few minutes. I'm like, well, how can you change a thumbprint? You have to change which finger they're using depending on what, what time they log in. Isn't that ridiculous? That was crazy. Well, like, what if I cut my finger? <laughs> okay, so we're going to do input, output, and flow. Move up a little bit. So input... is heat from the fire and it's thermal. So heat, we're gonna remind ourselves that it's thermal. Heat energy from the fire. So we could easily replace that fireplace with like um, any other heating element, you know, an electrical heater, those in-room heaters that you plug in. We could totally change that. Or radiator in the corner, you know. So any sort of thermal energy source could replace the fireplace. I think you have to. Yeah, good question. Ask the people who set it up already. You tried your personal. Yep. Okay, so maybe school. <laughs> and then the output is the heat we lost in the room. There's windows, doors, etc. And you know you can't remove windows and doors and sit in a room with a fireplace because you'll get poisoned and die. So you gotta have them.
we call this whole system with the um, the room and the windows and doors, we call it the envelope. That's not really important. That's just a side note. And we know from our notes last week, but we want to just highlight it again, that a fireplace, or a fire, I should say a fire, has low entropy, meaning its molecules are crazy. The molecules are running around, they're bumping into each other, the flames are going off in every direction. It's not controlled, so it's in disorder. And because of that, it gives us some heat. It lets us exchange. Uh, entropy is like energy. It's like heat energy. Jeopardy had a good question on that the other night. With that new Jeopardy guy, who I don't like. But at least we have Jeopardy. Okay, next we're going to look at um, some formulas, and then we'll see if we can get to the um, example, but that might be tomorrow, because it's Wednesday. What's the hurry? Anybody coming up for a laptop today? Let me know if you need any like specific appointments. Okay. okay, maybe the fireplace needs to go away and cry in the corner. Okay, so I gave everyone credit for yesterday's thing as long as you put in something, but make sure you check the um, the response, like the the reply thing, the comment thing, um, to make sure you have mechanical to see if there's a question that that says, "Hey, update this." Jariel taking that first zero of the new quarter, huh? Come on, you can do that. What happened? That's an easy one. Jariel, are you in there? Okay, let's look at some of the equations. Everybody okay with this? If you're not, I can put it back up later. Three, two. Okay, so we have some equations for thermal energy transfer. Thermal.
thermal energy, transfer equations, and there's just four we're going to look at. <clears throat> so the first one is Q equals M times C times delta upper T. Q doesn't really stand for any particular word. Q is just some scientist saying, oh, hey, this is cool. I'm going to use a Q. So here's my theory. Have a Q. Here's just being random, um, mostly because everything else was taken. And then it means the energy transfer. So how much energy is going from one place to another. And we have to have that in the units of joules. Add that, oh, don't smoke it, joules. And then you probably know that M is mass. And it has to be in kg. So two years ago, we saw on the end of course exam, they gave it in grams. So people did all this work. And it's the, the equations are long. And they screwed up because they should have given it in kilograms. That was, that was bad. So if you see a question in grams, you got to convert. I won't do that to you, but the EOC will. And then specific heat capacity is C. So remember, a lot of these letters, and you probably already know this, so I don't mean to insult your intelligence, but a lot of these letters are used and reused in different scenarios. Like you'll see a C in electricity when you get deeper into it for Coulombs. Um, you'll see M's for other reasons when you're in physics, the T, uppercase, lowercase. It's a little ridiculous. Just remember the setting you're in. Like, oh, I'm doing thermodynamics, so that C's got to be specific heat capacity. This one has a tricky um, units. So just be careful you recognize them. Don't stress over them. They're joules divided by kilograms multiplied by degree Celsius. So you write it like that. That's supposed to be a degree symbol. Not something I'm going to ding you on. Um, but something you need to know. So for specific heat capacity, it's how much heat you need to raise one gram, so not kilogram, but one gram of like any substance to raise it one degree Celsius. So I'm going to give you that definition uh, just to remind you. I'll put that down in a second. And delta T is the change in temperature. Generally, we use Celsius for this, um, but I'm not going to write that there because when I studied chemistry, it was all about Kelvin. And my, my professors were like, Kelvin, Kelvin, Kelvin. My physics guys were like, Celsius, Celsius. So whatever. Whatever comes up in the problem is what we're going to use. And let's do the definition. This is just a definition for you to know. Amount of heat needed or required to raise the temperature of one gram, so a whole gram, that's a lot, of any substance. One degree Celsius. So you want to increase it, make it hotter. And as an example, water has high heat, specific heat capacity. Mm. 
Can mm -hmm. you move it up? Yeah. Oh, I apologize. So your example is water has high specific heat capacity. And that just means it takes more energy. So it takes more energy to increase the temperature of water compared to most things. That's why you gotta wait when you're making your ramen noodles. With that water bottle, oh, you guys microwave everything, don't you? <laughs> Okay, so we just have two more equations to look at, just like we did on the top there. And then we'll leave it at that. We'll do the practice problem tomorrow, because this is boring. I know that. <laughs> I'll let you copy that, and we'll do the next two. And then tomorrow, we'll smack them together. So I'm going to move that and show you two small equations, um, but let me know if you need a little more time copying that. Last thing we're going to do. Are two more equations. We're still in thermal energy transfer. And we have equation number two. And it is P is equal to Q. This is a small delta T, a lowercase delta T. So in this case, the P is the rate of energy transfer. Oh, I messed up my system. Goodbye, OCD. <coughs> Oh, well. and it's in watts. And if we spent more time in electricity, we would have seen that power is watts. And we didn't get to do it because we weren't running the robots around. It just makes more sense when we do that. You'll do it again next year with Miss Alder. And then we already know Q <clears throat> is the energy transfer. And that's in joules. That's the units. So these equations are interchangeable. You could take that equation we had for Q and you can put it in here. You can mix and match because they're equal to each other. It's a pain in the butt though. This delta T is different than your last delta T. You have to be really careful of that. Um, when I got to college, it was, you know, it was 100,000 years ago, 2012, I graduated, um, and they were still printing out papers for worksheets and tests. 
And if they messed up, uppercase T, lowercase T, you had to know your stuff because they would have it wrong on the paper, their formatting. I haven't seen that recently when I'm back to college because everything's digital now. Um, but just be careful you get an old school professor. <laughs> just know your stuff. This is change in time. This will trip everybody up. And you have to put it in seconds. Unfortunately, these practice problems love to give you like milliseconds, nanoseconds, you know, just being a pain in your butt. That's an easy one. And then number three, and there's one more after this and we're done, is P is equal to K times A times delta upper T divided by L. And this is going to take us into our second unit. So we already know what P is from the one above it. P is the rate of energy transfer in watts. So we don't really have to go crazy rewriting that. We have to know that A is the area of thermal conductivity. So where is it happening? Like the size of our room. Activity as well. We know that this delta T is a change in temp, not time. So change, delta means change, upper T means temp. So P is rate of energy, power in watts. And then A is the area of thermal conductivity. T is change in temp. I'm going to give you K and L. L is the thickness of the material. We're going to use this a lot next unit. I don't know if the unit matters. I have to go back and read up, and I'll tell you. And practically, the way it's generally inches, you know, pound feet and inches, they're big on US customary, but I'll tell you if it's different. And then K, it's going to get messy now, is thermal conductivity. And we'll look into that when we look at the uh, problems. Conductivity, or what's actually happening in the system. There's only one more, and it uses all of the um, variables we're seeing already. There you got everything. So I'm going to put it on here. And it says that the area, the thermal conductivity is equal to power. So rate of energy transfer times the thickness of the material divided by the area of thermal conductivity multiplied by delta T. Miss, can you go a little bit more up? Just a little bit. Got it? No, no, no. Like, All the way? Like, so I can see the top part a little bit. Yeah, that's perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. If you look at the last equation, it's the same as number three. It's just rearranged so that you can use it to solve for oh, okay. activity. That's for everybody. And that's it for today. I meant to do a practice problem with you, but I forgot this takes so long. That's all you guys need. If you got it, you're good to go. If you have questions for me, Put it in the chat or just talk. Otherwise, enjoy your day.
somehow I blocked myself out of YouTube. I have to like have a link. I can't go to the main page. I must have put it on the list. Stop recording, I'm sorry.